G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, this morning I'm doing a quick job. I've uh, got air connectors, as you can see here, and these are what are known as JMAC connectors. They're a very old style connector. Uh, industry uses them, but a lot of people these days use Nitto stuff. These are a button connector, and they're good because they don't come apart very easily. The nittos, the sleeve can get jagged on something and they can separate. So, yeah, I've used these for forever and, uh, yeah, no problem. The only problem, well, there is one problem that buying them these days, they're a bit hard to source, well, they're quite hard to source, in fact, compared to nitto because, uh, yeah, the popularity thing. Anyway, I had to buy one. I've got a few bits and pieces here and I had to, I had to get one which would be the male part but go onto the hose and I've got stuff in there but nothing that will do the job and I looked around to buy one so what I want basically is the male one like that with the barb on the on the other end to go up the, the hose so we go and try and buy one they got everything except this you know you can buy all these screw in ones threaded like this can't get them with the with the barb, so I thought I'll stuff it. And they were like six dollars fifty each, you know, for that poxy little thing. So I thought, bugger, I'll make one. So that's what I'm doing this morning. I'll show you where I'm at with it and how I'm going about it. Right, well over here you can see how far I've progressed with it. And this is what I'm copying, basically. One of those. So basically, it's just working a brass and sizing it correctly. Uh, the tricky bit is getting into the job because you haven't got a lot of clearance for the angles and stuff. So there's a couple of tricks to this. I'll show you how I do it and if you want to make up something like this, well, so be it. Right, to do this job, rather than use a, a live centre like this, which is going to foul the tool post because of the angles that you need to do to get the the champ from there. I use a a dead center. I often do this dead center in the tail stock. You could put it in a drill chuck or whatever. Just make one up. They're easy. Make a long one with parallel sides, and then you can always use it in the tail stock, and you can give yourself plenty of plenty of clearance. You're not going to be restricted in any way by, by this heading this or I should say this heading this so that's trick number one use this sort of setup trick number two is when you're doing your measurements on this uh, you could use uh, digital caliper or vernier caliper or something like that but I don't I prefer to except for the, the length measurements where you'll be measuring from that face to this face here. When it comes to diametric uh, measurements, I never use uh, measuring calipers that are you know, digital or, or uh, an analog. I use the old style calipers which you rely on feel. My old man taught me this and you can size everything by, by feel. Your fingers are very sensitive and when you're trying to measure the small areas like this and you're running it on a scale, I find it much, much easier to use these, these calipers. Plus you can use these with the machine running. With the machine running, they'll just slip on and slide over. Uh, if you use the, you know, the blade type uh, calipers with readouts, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't recommend it. But these you can. So that's how you do it. So anyway, we're, we're progressing quite nicely. I haven't drilled it out yet, and I haven't done the barb in, but I've completed this end, and I'll show you. You can test it to see if it is actually going to work. So we'll, we'll check it now. The important thing is that it seals, and... Uh, we're going to just use the, the airline. Now, here's a, a uh, air nozzle. So we've got air there, and it all seals there. 
and if, it, if this works properly on the angles and everything, this will hook on and there'll be no air leaks, which it does. So under pressure, which it is, everything's perfect. Now we just take it off, comes off perfectly. So that's a good job, that's as good as you could hope for. So now I'll, uh, I'll run the drill through, drill out the centre, and then I'll do the barb on, on, on the hose end. The old job will be done. I made it a bit different. I mean, I can't do a, a hexy for a screw-on setup very easily. You don't need it with a hose anyway, so I just knurled it, and uh, that'll just give me something extra to grip. So it's a little bit different to this, but it's not any bulkier, really. And when I pull, pull the connectors apart, I can just grip on that, and uh, I'll break those edges after I've done the job I'll do that on the linear show. Right, we've spun the work around, we've put the, uh, the job in a collet. Now before you tighten your, your, your collet up, I always centre the work. That way you can be sure that it's going to be located accurately because if you use a collet and the job is shorter than the full collet length, it is possible to cant the work. So always put it in, use your centre and your tail stop to get it lined up correctly and then you do your, your wrench up, alright? That's the way to do it. Right, well now we have to turn down the diameter of the diameter of the the barbs, the external size of the barbs. And once again I'll just use a set of plain calipers to measure that. And when we're there, well then it's just a matter of machine the the uh, angles on it, the barbs, job's done. Simple as that. Okay, we're good to go. Right, well, we've put some barbs on there. That'll be good enough. So the job's just about finished. I've just got to deburr it now. Rightio, that's what we wanted. That's what we got. Turned out pretty good. So it just shows what you do with a lathe. That's totally within the realm of a mini lathe or a shear line or anything. And yeah, make up this stuff. No problem. Okay, that's it for me. See you next time. Cheers.